blastocyst, characterized by a blastocele following cavitation of the morula, first consists of an inner cell mass surrounded by trophoblast cells. The inner cell mass uses delamination movements to separate into two distinct sheets of cells. One is the epiblast and the other is the hypoblast. The epiblast will become the embryo proper, while the hypoblast forms the yolk sac and contributes to extraembryonic structures. The hypoblast and epiblast spread along the interior of the trophoblast to form the yolk sac and amniotic sac, respectively. The blastocyst is now bilaminar and gastrulation can begin. Let's zoom in on the bilaminar disc. Gastrulation is a period of dramatic change where the epiblast forms three embryonic germ layers that will differentiate into all components of the functional human. Gastrulation begins with a linear induction of the primitive streak that forms from the caudal to cranial end of the blastodisc. At this point, two embryonic axes are determined, the anterior-posterior axis and the right and left axis. Individual epiblast cells from the surface layer move medially over the blastodisc towards the primitive groove. As they involute into the primitive streak through epithelial to mesenchymal transition, the epiblast cells lose their cell adhesion, causing a change in shape from columnar to bottle cell to mesenchymal cell. The first mobile epiblast cells to enter the node will first become cordomesoderm that will later form the notochord. The first cells to enter the streak will displace the hypoblast to become endoderm, and the cells that enter the primitive streak later, in the same fashion, will become mesoderm. The cells that don't enter the primitive streak and remain on the surface will become ectoderm. Now the primitive streak regresses caudally until it has completely disappeared. As we zoom out, gastrulation is complete and neurulation will commence.